Dave here. How are you? I held that title image up just for a little bit to see if I could see the stream coming through. Now, I couldn't see it there, so if you guys could let me know how it's going, that would be just wonderful. I'm hoping. I'm hoping it's streaming. I'm hoping I'm coming through in full HD. Uh, but if I can have someone, it doesn't need to be everyone typing, yes, Dave, that'd be just great to see if it's happening. Excellent. Thank you very much. All right. Now, the only thing, vision is okay. I'm going to move around a little bit. See how that goes. Excellent. All right. Now, I did notice that here, when I move in front of those lights down the back, I'm still going to have those lights pushing into my head a little bit. I'm going to fix that. You can see all the extra wrinkles. <laughs> How good is this? This has been 13 years, actually seven years for us in the, in the waiting since it was announced that we were going to get it up here. It's been every quarter of a year, every three months. Yeah, it'll be end of the month, end of the quarter, end of the quarter, end of the quarter, put off, put off, put off. And then finally it happened. Now, if you're on Facebook, hold on a second, that reminds me, I better do a quick post as well uh, on Instagram. Just let people know that it's happening. Come in there, share. Done. That wasn't too hard. Um, yeah, so I did a post on Patreon explaining the whole story of, about uh, the lead up to it and what actually happened on the day <coughs> that we had the... Um, National Broadband Network connected to here. Now, I can tell you, it's fibre to the curb, but it's fibre to the curb up the street. <laughs> it's not right out in front of my place. It's an awkward property. And so it's around about 250 metres of copper from where we do our connection into the optical fibre down to here. And up in the office, I'm getting fantastic speeds down and up. But I've noticed the extra distance down into the workshop here, I still get brilliant download speeds, but my upload speed has dropped to about a quarter of what it is, just with that extra 20 odd meters and another connection of copper. But I think it's going to be okay. We'll see how it goes. Cool glasses, they match the shirt. D Dance not so good, but the video is still excellent. Hello everyone, vision and audio clear in New Jersey, Harry. Uh, LabWorks looks great. Looking and sounding great, Dave from Paul. Peter, morning, Dave from Newcastle. Adam, like the colour of the glass frames. Planty, Dave, it's looking good in Melbourne. Vision, good, no distortion, sounds good. Ron, I'm muffs and the same colour, yes. John, looking great. John, uh, would be, hi everyone. And Ron, Wi Fi. Um, possibly, possibly I could, but I'd have to put a Wi Fi broadcaster and what have, have you in my main computer. Now this computer I've got because it's not a laptop, this is a real heavy kick-ass machine for video and it, it can process video in a snap. It does it really easily. So to give you a rough idea, the processor is using 17% of its full power at the moment to do all of this. So it's, it's doing it easy. Uh, drop frames, zero. Absolutely zero. All right. On the show today, today, as I said, is, 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 is the 10th of May, 2020. Oh, now one of the reasons I'm saying that as well is you may notice that I've just put a whole heap of videos up onto my other channel, which is the Dave Stanton Live channel. And what's going to be happening going forward, I will broadcast the show on this channel. It'll stay up for a week. And then at the end of the week, I'll take it down and move it over to the other channel. And I will put the date on, this will be a little hash sign, archived, the date, and quickly what it's about. So if you need to go back through the videos of the live show, it won't be the midweek chat, it'll just be the, the main live show. That's where they're going to be. Now, I wasn't going to do it because um, it's it, not really going to work, Ron, because it's a couple of acres. So I... I Wait until I had the NBN to give you a rough idea. I keep telling people a two gig file to upload used to take me between seven to 18 hours, depending on, you know, if it was sunny or I don't know, but it took a long time. So now 
to upload a two gig video it takes me about seven minutes. This is, it's, it's huge. It's a massive difference for me. So now I can download the previous shows from YouTube and then punch them up onto the other channel. The download turnaround for those shows takes me around, because they're only about a 400 meg file, uh, two minutes upload. So now I'm going through them all, but I'm having to listen to play the first part back so I can hear what the date, uh, and then I can give you the correct dates on each, each show. So there we go, on the show today. Look great from Sterling Heights, Michigan in the States with the HD you may want to remember as we get older, we need to stay a little bit further away from the camera. Thank you. No latency here in Maryland, um, Hung Kyu Tran. Kerry, Ian, Kerry, g'day Dave and all the crew, the excellent vision and the way, all the way down here in Springwood. Can't stay as I have to go to see your mum. Well, Ian, <laughs> good, go and see mum. So happy Mother's Day to all the mums out there. And uh, it's just one of my daughters was married on Mother's Day here in the, on, the prop, on the property. So it's her wedding anniversary as well. Get back off this page, back to the other. I'm a little bit excited. All right. G'day, Dave. How are you? This week on the show, Russell's Creations, Hamilton's Old Tools, Unboxing the DeWalt Chainsaw, which was on the, on the uh, front page there of the, of the show. Chessboard project continues, CNC in action during the week. So what we're going to do first is I'll throw up Hamilton's old tools so you can have a quick look at those. If I can get that across to there without bugging it too much. Hamilton's tools, where are we? There we go. So there, having a look here. You like the picture, Paul? Beautiful. All right. Hamilton, here we go. Hi Dave, I've been watching your weekly catch-ups and thought you might be interested in the attached photo. A selection of tools handed down from my father and father-in-law. They are a pleasure to use and I get such a kick out of the quality and longevity. I'm in the process of giving them a clean-up, etc. You have inspired me to do more in my shed, starting a strip-build cedar kayak from plans. How cool is that? Um, regards, Hamilton. Now, I realize as well now I never ran the uh, I never ran the intro. I'm going to do it now. Look, this is weird, but the reason I'm going to run the intro now is because I want to see if the video quality coming out is going to be any better. Now there are a couple of scene grabs in there that are going to be low resolution, but let's have a go. Let's, this is going to be interest, very very interesting. And uh, anyone who hasn't hasn't uh, started watching because they didn't hear the music, here we go. Dave here, how are you? <laughs> so was that any better? I, I'll get to see it on the uh, on the replay. So Hamilton led to the finished kayak. Uh, oh yeah, love to see the kayak build. That's so good. Now, no one is late. Exactly right. No one has to go off to the uh, naughty corner and eat Tim Tams and Vegemite. <laughs> uh, Otto had to manually change to HD. Cool. Excellent. Here we go. Next thing, next thing, next thing. Um, let's, let's hook into the DeWalt. I'm, I haven't opened it up yet. And one of the things I've done is on my uh, box cutting knife, or standing knife, what we call them standing knives in Australia. I'm going to sharpen it up just a touch. These blades, can you see that? I used to throw these away any time they looked to get a little bit dull. You know, it's just how it was when I was doing things on the tools. You didn't have time to stop and sharpen a blade. You, you, you're flat out trying to sharpen a chisel. So I give it a little bit of rouge and uh, and pull it out, out like that. Now you can probably see this absolutely easily. And the other direction.
Now I'm sharpening this because I'm going to do a couple of things on the show today. One of the things being, open this box up, which doesn't require a massively sharp blade. But the other thing is when I get this in here, there it is. This is a great knife. This one I love because it's got a little clip on the side. The other ones you'd had to, you know, use a screwdriver in it. These are brilliant. Okay. The other thing is I'm going to keep working on the chessboard. And let's get that up so you can see what's going to be coming. This is the one that I poured the resin on. And is that nice? Who would have thought? Who would have thought? So we're going to do a little bit of work on that. But first thing, as I say, let's get this up. Now you remember about a year ago on the show, Jeremy lent me one of these. And he brought all his gear up. And we had a look at all the DeWalt stuff with the, uh, the batteries, the, the, um, the 9 amp. And they're fantastic. I love it. Never thought sharpening old standing blades. It works fantastic. It really does. So anyway, I got in touch with people during the week, or sorry, about a, two weeks ago, and I bought this. No one just gave it to me. I went out <laughs> and bought it. So there we go. I'm very excited. And it arrived, and there was no one home when it arrived, so the courier, of course, took it back to his depot, and then the next day it arrived again. So let's see what we've got here. That's a bit sharper, isn't it? So it's an 18 volt amp, 9 amp hour and a 54 volt 3 amp hour. This 3 amp hour, this is for Australian conditions, not what it's like in the States. All right, I'm excited. I might have mentioned that. There's the charger. Yep. And the saw. I'm going to open up the other end, the reason being I don't want it to go cascading all over the place. If it was wrong, like I don't want the, um, not if it was wrong, I'm just talking rubbish. <laughs> uh, I don't want it coming out onto the blade end if there's all sorts of other things in here. A lot of cardboard packing. And some more stuff under here. I think the battery will be in there. What do we got? Yes, there's the battery. Cardboard out of the way. And the saw. Here we go. <laughs> I love it. Jeremy lent me one, as I say, for about a month. And I used it on the property. And I got this just after Matthias Wandel had been doing some reviews on, on one. And he wasn't overly impressed with it. You know, I'm, I'm not going to go out there and start swinging around like a samurai sword and try and cut down little bits of tea tree because that's it's no good for any chainsaw. But I used this, not this one, but the, the exact same model, and it worked fantastically. I'm very, very happy with it. Down in the bush, cutting up uh, trees that had dropped, like that had come over in the storm, and I needed to clean them up. The fact that it's battery, there's none of this to try and start it. Um, even though I know that still chainsaws start first time every time. You just ask Ian and also uh, Stephen, they'll tell you. Stephen's got a couple of stills. But this was what I was, uh, what I was after. Yeah, I also have a rip blade for it because Ian made one up for me. So that's for if people were saying, what am I going to use it for? Well, I've got some bloodwood out there that I, I had a bloodwood tree taken down around about year and a half ago and it's out in the garden or up in sections about you know three feet long and I'm going to slice those up. Oh this I'm so excited about that. Okay so it lasts and lasts and lasts. The chain spins around at an unbelievable speed. The because there are five point I don't know what that was because there are five uh, sorry because there are nine amp hour battery they do take a while to charge up. It's, it's about an hour, a little bit over an hour. I have done one. Uh, it's got a, I think it's got a fan in it, blows air through it as it's doing it. 
I'm going to take that off and I think I just pull it back or I push that down and then I can pull that off. Lovely. Indicator on the back and it's only got one there. I don't even have to worry about saying, can you see this? Because <laughs> it's HD. Tell me if the streams... I haven't dropped a frame. Have not dropped one frame. This is brilliant. Loving it. All right, so there we go. That's, that's the chainsaw. The battery drops in. There. Take that off. There's the blade. Pull that, the chain brake forwards. There we go, it should work. Whoop, except for it's got that little thing around it. We'll whip that off. Maybe I should use the... No, it's gone. All right, let's see what happens. I love it. Now what's gonna happen is I'm not gonna run it any more than that because I really do have to put uh, oil in for the re reservoir for the lubricate the chain as it's turning. Otherwise, it's going to ruin it. I'm going to take it out. It's got a little safety here that you have to push down before you can pull the trigger. <laughs> oh, very happy. Very, very, ha very, very, very happy. All right. So it looks brand new. I'm going to have to take photos of it because after I start using it, all of that's going to disappear because I don't, I'm not, I'm not a uh, animal with my tools, but sometimes I make them work hard. There you go. Lovely, lovely, lovely. I'm going to put this back on. That's so nice. Slide it on and then pop it down. Out of the way. All right, next thing we're going to do is have a bit of a look. Are you enjoying things so far, guys? I'm not really reading a lot because there's a lot I have to do. So I'm going to take out the instructions because if all else fails, you know what we do. Read the instructions. <laughs> okay. And what have we got there? Sounds pretty stout. Happy as a pig in a proverb. Yes, Paul even has a hang-up spot on the bottom. Lovely. Any saw in the Alaskan mill, but blade might be short. Well, yeah. I. It might... It might be a situation where I can put a longer bar and a longer chain on it. But the thing is, I don't know how that would go with warranty. But it's always a thought, you know. You never can tell. I need a little drink out of this really nice mug. Can you read it all right now? <laughs> Let's have a look. The next thing, the next thing, the next thing. Done the chainsaw and we are now 18 minutes into the show. This is great. I need a pen. Ah, oh dear. You know what? Haven't got one. Haven't got one. Not to worry. Not to worry. Uh, let's have a look at Russell's creations. Horses for courses. Exactly right. Okay, so let's go down to Russell. Let's see if I can find it here. And how often do you use an Alaskan mill? Russell, here we go. Here's your stuff. Now, I'm going to let you know, I did ask Russell to send me some higher res photos, but he hasn't been able to do that. So I'm going to show you these as three images of things that he's done. The first two are going to look a little bit soft and pixelated, but the last one is really nice. So bear with me. And uh, he says, hi, Dave. Of course, in full HD, uh, some of my stuff. Let's go to the first one. Um, the platter is Cooktown Ironwood and it's French polished. The, so that's lovely. Very, very nice. And the next one is the desk. Now, as I say, it might be a bit pixelated. He says, the plans for the desk and the dressing table came from Chisholm College where I was working at the time. I liked the look of what the apprentices were making, so I got a copy of the plans. Um, it, the, it's not, hold on a second, the dressing table and desk, I was told is leatherwood, but I'm not sure about that. The finish is tongue oil. Now let's have a look at his beautiful dressing table. How nice is that? Reminds me of my one that I've just finished restoring. Give me a second, Planty, and I'll have a look for you. Okay, so Russell, 
my only, my only concern with that dressing table, and I know it's not you, it's the plans, is the top shelf where the mirror is. Now, I, I, I was thinking that when I first saw it, I thought, what a great idea. But then I was thinking to myself, what if someone wanted to tip the mirror back a little bit to see what's happening? And, you know, you might have makeup and, and you, rustle your lipstick and everything might start go flying all, <laughs> all over the top of the dressing table. But that's beautiful. It is so much better than the one that I've got in the middle at the bottom because you can actually get your knees in under there. There was a lot of thought given to that. The one that I've got, I, I said to Vicky, you sit there and see what you think. And uh, she said, well, I can get one knee under the, under the dressing table. <laughs> you know, it's like when you're watching these um, Escape to the Country shows and things like that in, in the UK. They walk into these medieval homes that have been, you know, restored and what have you. And everyone's ducking as they walk in because that's how tall people used to be. So I'm wondering if the same thing. I wonder if I've come from a, from a, a line of short asses. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I know that, you know, the, the better you eat as you're growing, you know, the, the uh, taller you're going to be, all that kind of stuff. Um, let me have a quick look. I'll see if I can read the chainsaws. It'll be on the box. Surely it'll be on the box. It is. There you go. You can read it yourself. It's a DCM 575, is it? X1. There you go. And I am stoked. I'm stoked. Those batteries are going to be worth a bomb. Anyway, uh, <clears throat> let me see. Next, next, next. Groovejet. Excitement was the word you were looking for. Yep. Uh, Stephen, I thought it was uh, to make attackers stoop to put them at a disadvantage. <laughs> uh, Labworks, did they not fill your boots? Uh, no, no. None of that, none of that, none of that. This, uh, there's, there's very little lag between when I'm talking and reading down the side here. So when you guys are popping stuff in, I'm getting to see it much, much quicker because of the faster connection. Okay, so there we go. Uh, so Russell finishes off by saying, well, both Saturday and Wednesday shows, hope the NBN goes ahead as planned. Well, in the end, it did. It did in the end. Next thing, next thing, next thing. Let's have a look at the CNC machine in, in action. Dave, hate to say this, but in HD you have a touch of grey. I know. That's me. You know, what can I say? What can I say? Um, <clears throat> pardon me. Is the whole image filling on the screen or is it not? I'm hoping you're seeing the whole screen size. I don't know what the story is there. Maybe if I move this one, hold on, a little bit of on the run. Yeah, maybe. Let me know. Is the image filling the whole screen or does it need to be made a little bit bigger? Picture is great. Thank you. Thank you. CNC. Now, during the week, I had one of my buddies ring me up and say, Dave, I bought this big chunk of hoop pine from this guy down in Sydney. Uh, the screen size is not 16 by 9. Okay. Okay. Uh, I see what's happening there. I see what's happening. I'm going to pull that back a little bit. It should be okay. You can see the chart to the right in the picture. The chart. The chat. Yeah, the chat is there on purpose. That's what I put. That, it's embedded. So if you watch this on a television further down the track, or like I'll review this tonight, I'll watch it on the telly, all of the chat is down the right-hand side in the screen on purpose. Uh, because a lot, you won't be able to see the chat popping up as an ordinary situation like you do on a laptop or a computer. Dave, don't worry about the grey hair. I still have some ungrey hair <laughs> left. Bad kids get kicked up the bum, so grew taller. Good kids got fat on the... <laughs> is that right, way? Okay, CNC. Now, got back to this big chunk of hoop pine. It was a monster. My mate only wanted the smaller section for a mantelpiece for his um, daughter's house that he's helping, you know, just do a couple of things. New home, they 
old new home that they're fixing up and putting a mantelpiece over the fire. So this stuff was 79 millimeters thick and the part that I had had been laying on the ground uh, and also it had termite activity in it whilst it was still alive. The tree had been hit by lightning, that's why they took it down. So it was an arborist and rather than feed timber into a wood chipper, he sells chunks of slab left over. So it's been dead, well it's been cut down about a year ago and because we had such a hot summer and dry, no and drought, this, these slabs that he had cut up, he's got a milling machine, he, um, he, it's, it's there, the floor matting finishes just here. This is an area I roll, I roll machines around it. Um, so he, he slabbed it, stacked it, and this was the bottom piece on the ground as well. And an, an, another colony of ants had moved in to where the white ants were living. So I've got this area, I, the, my buddy gave me the big section that had you know, what he considered being you know, the bad part. I thought this is the treasure. So I've milled it up and I'll show you a picture of it. The slab image, here we go. This is the chunk after I ran the CNC over the top. And I reckon that looks magic. Absolutely beautiful. So that's, that's uh, 2250 long. So it's 2250 millimeters, which is seven foot six. And it's 800 wide, which is about three, oh sorry, 31 inches and around just over three inches thick and I'm going to possibly look at filling all of those voids on the top with resin and then either I'll cut the right hand side do a slice down there and spin it around kind of pivot it in the middle and make a table with it I don't know I don't know but I was given that you can see down the bottom where it's kind of exposed that's that's what looks like a sap vein that's been exposed the guy who cut it down, he said, that's where the lightning had hit it. And it kept on growing after the lightning. Isn't it amazing? Absolutely amazing. Now, also, there was a section. I'll come back here. There was a section also where um, at, at the end of that, that they cut off. And Steve's going to make a bedside lamp base. So he's going he's to do a big circle. So I machined the top of this for him, and he's going to cut the circle. I'll show you a little bit of the machining, I think. And also then we're going to go and have a look through the, at the dust extraction. So I'll be showing you what's happening on, on the CNC, and then we'll take it. I'll, I take the phone. It's just as it was happening. I grabbed the phone, started shooting it, followed it out to the outside because I had people ask me during the week, Dave, is your dust extraction outside? And yes, it is. I've got the cyclone outside. It's like it's a separator. And then you guys watch me build the, the silencer. And you'll actually see it in use and how much or how nothing is going out. That separator, I'm, I'm, I'm really considering getting another one for in here because I've got the big super dust deputy in a 44-gallon drum. This is a whole lot more convenient. So make me an offer if you want that Super dust deputy. Here we go. So what do you think of that? That's just amazing. That machine also, someone asked me during the week, on a, on a rating of uh, 1 to 10, how would you rate getting a CNC or keeping onto it? Uh, your original CNC machine is in your head and at the end of your arms and your hands. Correct. So this is, this is relating to that, Michael. So I, I was asked, you know, on a 1 to 10. Well, I couldn't really tell him on a 1 to 10, but it's another machine. You know, it's, it's a tool that I use in the workshop. 
It'll sit idle for a couple of months, never touch it. And then all of a sudden, like just happened, grabbed it. It, uh, it, it was working beautifully. And I'll show you what else we did with it, because this is the next thing we're going to do is on the chessboard. Labworks hope you have solar panels on the property or would not want to be paying for the power bill. Uh, the dust extraction is fantastic. Labworks, if you uh, watch my Facebook page, you'll see that I've got 14.2 kilowatts of solar power being generated on the property. So not really an issue for me at this stage. And I'm not saying that to try and sound smug. I'm the kind of person that I don't go out. I don't do things that a lot of people do. I don't go to pubs or anything like that. I stay here. I invest back in this property. And I do that with the aim to make my life as easy as possible as I head in towards retirement. I'm trying to be proactive. And so that's it's fantastic. Um, the reason I can get that amount of solar power is because I'm on three phase power into the property as well. I made sure that I tried to future proof myself. Okay, and to make Dave happy, exactly right. Oh, here's a little test. How cool is that? It's probably coming through beautifully. Might get into laser attachment for the CNC. I may even get a separate laser machine. I don't know because the thing with lasers, they burn a lot. I would prefer to have an enclosed cabinet. But that's something that I might even want to look at getting a 3D printer. <laughs> you never can tell. Never say never. Um, you're a homebody as well, Stephen. Yes, so this has made no difference to me that with this bug lately. Sounds like it is an amazing setup. Now, the CNC. Let's have a look. I've got... This is what I've been making. So you'll probably be able to see that pretty easily. That's just one full sheet of, uh, of melamine. And Vicky is making these chess boards and we're, we're doing a bit of an experiment. Um, and it's, uh, we're having a great time. So she'll help me design it on Aspire software and then we'll transfer it into a USB stick and then we'll go down and start having some fun. Now this next bit of video, let me just come back up to here. This next bit of video uh, with a white sheet on the board and I'm, I'm using my uh, little S8 mobile phone to do the video, I'll get a little bit of frequency buffering. It's, it's bouncing off the, the whiteboard. So every now and then, if I look down too hard, you'll see it'll start kind of getting a bit of a flickery light. So if you're someone who uh, suffers from epilepsy or strobe light is a, it affects you in a, in a bad way, be warned that part of the way through this little video, you will see that the strobing effect happen. Nothing I can do. I try and try and try and find the best spot to hold the phone, but every now and then it catches it. So here we go. Let's have a look at the screen TV. Oh. I tried to finish it off before we had too much flicker. Yes, uh, exactly right. So with batteries, they're not worth it at the moment. So that's why I put an oversized solar generation system on the roofs so that I could feed in and get paid for stuff that we weren't using on the property. So it balances out. So it's, it's made a huge difference. And as I've said before, my forecast was for four years down the track, the solar system will have paid itself off. And then from there on in, it's all, you know, it's, it's savings. With the fires and all the rain and everything that we've had, my peak period of production, which was summer, didn't perform as well as I'd expected. So I think it'll probably end up being closer to five years before it's all paid off. But... Uh, it's, it's really, really nice. One of the other advantages in during summer, all the solar panels are sitting around three to four inches above the roof. So they're acting as a sail or a shade across the top of the roof. In turn, it doesn't get as hot. And I can put my hand underneath. And the building doesn't get too hot. I don't have to use the air conditioning 
nearly as much. All good? <laughs> okay, just got a bad twitch. Oops, the flicker done that. Okay, plus run everything during the day. And yeah, one of my, our washing machine died a couple of weeks ago. So I bought a new one and it wasn't, you know, massively expensive, but it, it had a timer, you know, a, a, um, a, what would you call it? Oh, drawn a blank. You can set the time the machine starts. So I normally set it now to start at 10 o'clock in the day. Does the washing while no one's here. All of the power from the solar panels. I'm loving it. Wayne, you've had solar panel for six, six years. Yep. Brilliant. All right, what's the next thing? What's the next thing? Are you having a good time? I am. Delay start. That's it. I'm an idiot. <laughs> All right. Now, I'm going to show you a little bit on... These are the panels that I did on the machine. And this is two boards that we're making. Now, I'm probably going to go a little bit dark because this is going to change how the image is shown because it's looking for automatic exposure. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this. Now, why didn't I cut them out on the CNC? I'll tell you. Here's a little tip for people that haven't used the CNC for a couple of months or you haven't used it or new to it. This uh, groove here was done with that. That's a 90 degree V cutter. Now, when I set the machine up at the beginning, you, you reference all the X, Y, and Z uh, points, coordinates, home, you home everything. And then that squares the machine up and it, everything's perfect. It knows where it is in relation to where the job is when it's anchored down to the board. So, you're enjoying the show. <laughs> Timer, yes, all that kind of stuff, delay stuff. So, on my machine, it's got what's called a touch plate. Now, the touch plate uh, has a brass base in it, spring mounted, and it's also got an uh, aluminium lip all the way around. Now, when I start the machine, when, when I've got the job, I, on this corner here, let's say, I put the touch plate over that corner and it pushes up against the corner. So then the machine comes over and it comes down first. And it, when, as soon as it touches the brass plate, it completes an electrical circuit. You've got a magnetic contact that you put onto the actual spindles drive section, onto the ER20 collet. So it comes down, it touches, comes back up. So it knows how high, it, it make, takes into account the thickness of the touch plate or the puck or whatever you want to call it. So it knows the height of the top of the surface. Because if I tell the machine I only want to go to cut down two millimeters into the top of the surface and keep going, it knows where it is. Then it needs to know where it's X, which is across, and Y, which is down the page. Okay, up and down a piece of paper. That's all you gotta do. Think about a piece of paper. Y axis is up and down, X is across the page. So then it needs to know where the X and the Y is. Now, like an idiot, I did all this with the V cutter in. It touched the edge, touched the other edge. And then, so I did all the V cut to start. And then I was going to send the 3 8 end mill cutter in it and cut everything out. And I stopped myself, which was lucky. Because angle, when it hit the edge of the, the touch plate, the reference was totally wrong because it was at an angle. It wasn't a straight section touching the edge of the touch plate. Do you follow what I say? There you go. So <clears throat> I decided not to run the second uh, tool path for the machine and to do it with my track saw. So that's what we're going to do now. I've cut the rest up. I cut all the rest up for Vicky uh, yesterday. So today I thought I'd just show you how it goes on the with the track saw. And then we're going to finish it off with a little bit of um, felt underneath the one that I've already done the resin on. Visitors here have to watch the rest. Uh, it's been worth the wait, John. Beautiful. Uh, yep, see you later, John. All right, so <clears throat> I'm going to go to Carl Cam, I think. There we go. So now you can see that okay. I'm hoping it's coming through at full HD because we've got up the top is, is a full HD video inside another full HD video. See how it goes. 
Now I'm going to use the TSO dogs and it's no secret I have an affiliation with these guys now because as I say I approach people that I love their gear and these things are great. So TSO products there and let's say there. Now I'm not using my rip either end. I'm using, I'm coming back in from it just a little bit. Uh, let's put, take that one out and put that one in over there, David. What are you thinking? That one there and this one back here. Now all I have to do is push that into there. I need to cut this right in the middle. So I'm going to use the 1400 track. This layout is a little bit, this width here is wider than I can fit if I put the board this way and have the track saw running that direction. Do you follow? You enjoying the Carl Canners working well? <laughs> okay, so I can put that in there and just pull this back slowly and then push it back ever so slowly that direction and around and that's beautiful. You like that? <clears throat> you may not see it all that clear. I'm hoping it's coming through okay. All right, now I'm going to put the uh, put these guys on. There you can see from there. These little track clips. I'm going to do two things. We're going to look at this cutting it with the uh, with the, the Stanton bench. Links in the description box if you want the plans or if you want to buy one from me. And then we're going to hook that over there. And then I'm also going to cut part of it with the um, the other thing. <laughs> with the, uh, the TSO's GRS 16 parallel edge. Move that along just a little bit. I'm going to raise this end up. This is the, uh, the guide that I made for, for the bench as well. Push that back into position. So if you've downsized, you're not in a workshop anymore and you want to be able to keep on doing carpentry inside the house or joinery, you can. Now I'm also going to use the track saw I've sold my original track saw and I've purchased a, the battery one. The battery one just frees me up that little bit more. It's heavier, which I like. My old one was beautiful, it just did beautiful cuts, but this one is a little bit more versatile. I've got a 6.2 amp hour battery for it, so it's got plenty of grunt. This is a Bluetooth battery, so it will turn my dust extractor on. So I'm going to slide that into there, like so. Now it'd work on one battery, but it, it, it turns at 3000 RPM, which is not fast enough for me. Two batteries, it'll turn at 5400 or whatever it is. Have a listen. Not a toy. It's beautiful. All right, now I need to plug the hose in and it's got a lock on the end and I might actually switch it over to the camera on the side here because you've seen me set it all up and see if that one's going to work. Camera three. There we go. So you can see the setup now. Hoses tend to get in the way. So I've made this little hose, pardon me, hose holder that directs it. So I can bring this back. Put it on the track. Now the other thing you've got to remember is with these, this little dust guard here needs to be pushed down. I don't put the clamp on it because every time I put the saw back on the table, it ends up keeping it up a little bit. So the way I, I, just, I just push it down and it's ready to go. So that's all good. I don't have to worry on my benches whether I've adjusted the blade depth. Of course, if I'm cutting on top of a table, like if you're using something like it, Festool's MFT3, you have to make sure that the blade isn't protruding too far through the cut. Otherwise, you're going to chop your table up. I've designed mine so it's always going to have stuff on the outside. 
And look, I haven't got the, oh, there they are. Give me a sec. I need to Bluetooth connect the battery to the uh, dust extractor. And it does that quite easily. So down here on the machine, I don't, you might be able to see it with full HD. I don't know. Let's give it a try. Just here, I push on that button till the blue thing starts spinning fast. There she goes. And I'm going to also push the button on the Bluetooth battery until it goes blue. There it goes. They've said g'day to each other. What do you think? Turn itself off in a second. Pop that back on there. Push this little guy down. We'll put the muffs on. Done. Take that off. See what I mean? When I put it down now, it just goes straight onto the table. Doesn't worry anyone. Okay, looks way too fancy for you. <laughs> Take that off. Pop it there. And just a perfect cut. I'll go to Carl Cam again so you can have a quick look. Where are we? Done. How nice is that? All right, now that I have that beautifully square edge, and this is square to that, I can also do cutting on top of this. We'll switch the cameras back to the main one. Melamine blade, no, it's the, just the fine cut, just the fine 48 tooth. And also the other thing is, Stephen, I'm cutting in this V section that we, we ran around the perimeter. I'll move that out of the way. We're going to get everything done today. This will be a first. This will be a first. We've still got around 15 minutes to go. And drop frames, zero. Zero, zero, zero. Love it. Okay. Those back down there. And this one out of the way. Now, remember I said you're not cutting on top of the table on, on my thing. But if you need to, just do this. Oh, then what's that going up there for? Something bumped my... There we go, that's better. It's always amazing, I thought the 240 volt was good. Oh, I love the cordless. You know, I, wasn't, I wasn't in the market to buy one, it's just that someone was asking me some questions about what to do as far as the Trax call is concerned. There's a deal on at the moment, you know, should I get that? I said, well, you can do that. Oh, look, I can do a deal on mine. I, I've been thinking about the cordless saw. I'm like, do you want to buy it? And they said, yep, not a problem. I didn't even sign it. <laughs> Should I have? Anyway, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use six millimeters. This is quarter inch thick ply left over from when I built the cabinets for Vicky. I was going to cut all these up and just throw them out, but they fit on my bench perfectly as packers. So as long as I make sure on this saw, I'm moving around a little bit in what I'm talking about, but it's okay. I'm going to put this on the ground and put these down here like so. And they look pretty good. Let's go to Carl Camp for that. Where are we? That one. So I've got them laid out. Now on the on the saw, it has two marking points. One has got FS, which stands for Furanshini, and the other one is, there's no label on it. So this side here is if I was just using the track saw to, as, a, as an ordinary saw <clears throat> without a guide track. So if I wanted to use the side of the saw, the face, as a reference, like say I want to um, so I've laid a whole heap of floating floor and I would and I want to trim all the ends so it doesn't expand and contract and get start to buckle. I can put my circular this track saw 
set it to whatever the thickness of the saw is, or sorry, the, the, the floating floor, um, and maybe half of the rubber underlay it's sitting on. And I would use this side on the, on the graduations here. Push this side of the saw hard up against the wall and then do the plunge and go for it. And that would be fantastic. This side allows for this six millimeters odd thickness of the track. So as I say, Fura is guide. Shine, I think, is rail. So there you go, so guide rail. Fura and Shine, and you have to sing it a little bit, apparently the Germans told me. Ha. Um, okay, what's impossible? Uh, I don't know what's impossible. All right, so this board is 16.5 millimeters thick. I measured it last night before I ran it on the CNC uh, so that I could tell a spire that I wanted to do a 16.8 millimeter cut to go through. I don't want to do too much cutting through the spoil board. Two batteries, what do you know? I bet some people were twisting thinking that the extra weight doesn't warrant the use of two batteries. Man, oh man, I'll tell you what, Groovejet, the extra weight is your friend. This thing, I don't use clamps on my tracks or my guide rails anymore. The weight of the saw traveling over the top holds it down onto the cushion strip, which is the same stuff I use in my benches, and it will not go anywhere. Now, the other thing is, having the cushion strip there, I can't move that. You can see my whole body is moving around those packers are going to stay there. So I need to have this at, I'm going to say that's six mil thick. This is 16, let's say 22. I'm going to set this to around 20. I'm, I might go just a touch more. So you push it in and down one click. Don't go too far. I'm going to come back to 19 millimeters on this. Should let me do the cuts perfectly. All right, now I'm going to pop this up on here and you will see I'm going to cut down the center of that groove and I'm going to use the parallel guide the GRS 16 so I've got the 800 track and I'm going to put the GRS 16 on it I'm just showing you a couple of options that you can do if you're interested in these kind of things. And as I said, I'm trying to future-proof myself so when I, I'm totally retired, I don't have to worry about things. I just, I'm not going to get frustrated with anything. I'll just enjoy it. Will it slide on the packers now? Not really. I'm going I'm to hold on to it, John. So now, lock that in position. That perfect 90 degrees and I've proved this you go back through my videos I might even put a link down there for the for this guy uh, for the video I did and I used my 2.7 meter rail which you know 2.7 meters doesn't sound like a lot it's nine feet this this fellow here I use this now Stephen's got a three meter just recently there you go Whoop, into the into the side over there. You can't even see the end of it yet. So that's I use that with the JRS 16, and I did four cuts. I went round and round and round and round, a big sheet, and it's so accurate. And it was then that I said to myself, man and oh man, TSA they do fantastic stuff. Okay, or the three meter Makita rail. Looks exactly right. Now I'm going to put this on here and bring it up to there. That's it. That's pretty easy. And it stays there. I could put the parallel guide on there, which is, a, there's a short one they do, a medium size, there's a 20, a 30, and a 52 inch that they do. And they sit over the top here. And I could actually set up that parallel guide with a stop on the end. So if I wanted to repeat at that distance all the time, I just put the stop down, sit the thing up here, and cut. That's what I did with Vicky's units as well. These, these big, they were um, six feet tall, by eight feet long, by two feet deep, three of them. And they came up really, really nicely. You ask her. 
Okay, so I'm, I'm good with everything there. I'm going to, when I'm, when I'm using the saw freehand, I wrap the hose around one turn. I'll drop it on there. The other thing about the GRS-16, it makes you have enough track at the approach to the cut. So it works very, very well. If you don't have enough approach, then these guides here won't lock onto the side of the, this rib on the track and the, the, the beginning of your cut is going to be stuffed. The far end doesn't have to have as much because the blade has already finished the cut before you get to the, the second holder or the second guide. Okay, so we're there. I'm going to flick the rail a little bit because then that says to the grip tape underneath the track here, don't hold on too much. You know, you might be holding me off a little bit. So you just release it like so, only a little bit while you're pushing here. And away we go. I'm going to push this down as well, which is that thing on the side. Here we go. I was, as the saw is plunging, you always think to yourself, bugger, I hope I've set it right. Well, I think I did. Take that off. And let's have a look. No cut in the bench. See that? I'll move that away. Nothing cut. And that is an absolutely perfect cut down that side. Beautiful. I'll finish the rest off um, after we've had the Zoom meeting. So if you're one of my patrons, you'll be able to jump into that. Now, one thing I wanted to do before I turn the show off, because we've still got a couple of minutes left, only a couple, is work on the one that I did the other week, or during the week, or whenever it was. And to do that, I'm going to give this a quick vacuum. Uh, because I'm going to put the thing face down the board that I've already done. Give it a vacuum with this. Bluetooth. Just basically it's anything that makes my life easier. I'm up for it. How good is the separator as well? The top, I keep all the vacuum tools in there. And as I said, I've, I've changed that bag once. Since I've had the separator, I've changed the bag. I've emptied the separating bin. I can't remember, it's got more than 20. Now the reason I've done that is because Resin doesn't get really hard for a few days, maybe seven days. So remember, this is the, the board that we did the second pour during the week. Looks pretty good. So here we go. I'm going to put this down on this side. And so I've got it on my grip strips, so it's not going to damage any of the resin. And we've got this here. Flip that. And I'm going to put felt on the back so that when you're using it inside the house, it's not going to scratch anything. Now, this may or may not go as planned. <laughs> we'll see. I'm going to peel off a little bit of this. Now, if you've got time, just keep watching. It's not going to be too much longer. I did think about possibly just putting it in the center and not worry about the outsides. But I'm going, to, I'm going to do a join, but I may not do the join today. So fold it over and do it from the side, right on the edge. Fold that paper over a bit more. And a 
along like so. Like all things, you take a bit of time to do something. Now you notice that it hasn't stuck down. I haven't done it in, in one big hit. So now I'm going to fold it back and then pull this out slowly. And that will let me guide the felt as it's going on. Similar thing to what I used to do when I was, used to build kitchen bench tops or put laminate on. I would put it all up on six millimeter dowels, quarter inch dowel. After you put all the contact adhesive down, sit the stuff up on top and then slowly pull a dowel out one at a time as you're lowering it down. And then the laminate went to the right place that you wanted it. Here's another little tip. <laughs> Now, I'm going to fold that paper there and using a steel ruler, put that on the edge. And this is the other reason I sharpen the knife. If I move this that direction along the bench, you're getting a, grabbing a hold underneath. Where's that Stanley knife? Does anyone else call it a standing knife or is it just people of my era or and my um, from Australia? Because I've always called them standing knives. Now I've lost the rotten thing. Oh dear. Well, you can see where I'm going with it. So if I don't, don't have that part, there it is, underneath. Knew it. <laughs> All right. I'm going to turn it around because I'm right-handed. Put it down on the strip again. There we go. All right, that one there, that one there. And sharp blade. And just, oh, you idiot. Ran off the edge. That should, should be good. Got it. Shh, don't tell anyone. <laughs> okay, so here I've got another piece and part of the off cut there, I'll put across there as well. I think that is going to be lovely. And this will make a beautiful chessboard for the pieces that Vicky makes as well. And she's going to put them on eBay. So if you're interested in getting them, no one looks at the bottom, but I know it's there, Stephen. I know it's there. Makes a nice mouse pad too. Look at that. Except for it's not working because it's too reflective. Okay. Back to there. And I'm starting to get the flicker. See, white does that. It really does. All right. Okay. I'm hoping everyone enjoyed it. We went a couple of minutes over. It's been a fun day, and I'm so looking forward to watching the recording to see how it's gone. And uh, the midweek show, we'll do that as well. Um, I was supposed to work for Carbotech tomorrow, but I've just realized my driver's license has expired, so I don't dare drive Vicky will run me down to the registry in the morning and I'll get that all sorted. We apparently got six months grace, but you're not allowed to drive. So six months grace before you have to go and sit the exam again. All good. All good. I'm going to put this on so I can see the correct thing down here. I think we've done everything I was going to. I'm pretty sure. Intro and text. Okay. Hope you had a great time. Uh, if it, just relieve a little bit of stress, whatever you... The Zoom meeting, I'll start in a couple of minutes. There's probably people in there waiting for me already. Look after yourselves, be nice to each other, and I shall see you all next week. Bye.